Yo Leute, es geht weiter im Myself Podcast. Mein Name ist Lionel Schiebli und heute habe ich mich mit Kike unterhalten. Kike ist mein Bufo-Schamane. <lacht> also ist der Typ, der mir zum zweiten Mal, der erste war Jascha Renner, der zweite war der Kike, der hat mir zum ersten Mal so eine richtig hohe Ladung Bufo verpasst, nämlich das Tiersekret, nicht das synthetisierte 5-MeO-DMT, sondern das reine Tiersekret von der Agerkröte, das so eine Art psychedelisches Cocktail ist. Ja, da ist 5-MeO-DMT drin, da ist DMT drin und anscheinend noch 19 andere äh, psychedelische, psychoaktive Moleküle. Verschiedene Dinge, die man auch noch nicht so ganz so gut erforscht hat. Anyway, ich habe das vor ein paar Jahren bei ihm gemacht und das hat mich ja, ich würde sagen, nachhaltig beeindruckt, nachhaltig verändert. Und es war in der Zeit irgendwann für mich, Kika aufzusuchen und zu sagen, ey Bro, hast du nicht Bock, hier im Podcast mal über deinen Lebensweg zu sprechen? Denn Kike war jahrelang koksüchtig. Der hat nach eigenen Angaben damals drei bis vier Gramm Koks am Tag geschnupft, war so komplett am Arsch. Die Frau ist weg. Er wollte sterben. Er hatte überhaupt nichts mehr, nichts Lebenswertes mehr in seinem Leben. Und dann hat er... In, durch eine Buffo-Zeremonie eine solche Schönheit, eine solche Liebe erfahren, dass er sein Leben wieder auf die Kette bekommen hat und sein Leben seitdem eben dieser Medizin verschrieben hat, um die Welt reist und nach eigenen Angaben über 3000 Menschen mittlerweile diese, diese Zeremonie verpasst hat. Er hat das Ganze auch in Mexiko bei den Indianern ähm, geler äh, gelernt. Ja, und darüber spricht er unter anderem im Podcast. Er ist ein krasser Typ mit einer krassen Geschichte. Das ganze Gespräch findet leider anonym statt, weil er möchte sein Gesicht nicht zeigen. Bufo ist leider immer noch ja, sehr illegal und deswegen haben wir uns dazu entschieden, dieses Gespräch nur über Mikrofone, also nur über Audio zu veröffentlichen. Nichtsdestotrotz ist es ein geiles Gespräch geworden. Sein Englisch ist nicht perfekt. Es ist ein Mexikaner, der, der, der Spanisch als Muttersprache hat und ja, sein Englisch ist gebrochen, aber gut genug für ein interessantes Gespräch. Ich glaube, wir haben uns ungefähr eine Stunde unterhalten und ich bin total froh und gerührt, dass dieser Mensch jetzt den Mut findet, langsam auch in die mediale Öffentlichkeit zu treten, wenn auch noch als anonyme Figur. Ich hoffe, dass sich das in den nächsten Jahren noch ändert, aber vielleicht auch nicht. Ja, eine Sache, die ich noch loswerden möchte. <lacht> Raucht bitte niemals alleine 5-MeO-DMT. Raucht auch bitte nicht alleine DMT. Generell sind psychedelische Erfahrungen, die man alleine macht, relativ gefährlich. Ich bin jetzt seit fünf Jahren in dieser Subkultur unterwegs und hier und da erreichen mich Geschichten von, von Menschen, die Schaden genommen haben, weil sie das alleine gemacht haben. Und außerdem, wenn ihr das macht, wenn ihr dieses, das stärkste Psychedelikum der Welt ausprobieren wollt, dann macht es bitte an einem vernünftigen Ort mit vernünftigen, guten, liebevollen Menschen, die sich dem gewidmet haben und das Ganze ernst nehmen und ernst meinen. Das ist kein Kinderspiel und ich wünsche dir, lieber Zuhörer, dir, liebe Zuhörerin, alles, alles Gute, ein wunderbares Leben und eine wunderschöne, sichere Reise. Ja, und jetzt viel Spaß mit meinem Gespräch mit Kike. Wir sehen uns am Ende des Podcasts wieder. Okay, my dear. <lacht> welcome to the, to, the, to the podcast. Welcome to the show. Um, Yeah, uh, what's your what's your story? Ah, uh, hello. Uh, thank you so much, Lionel, to invite me over. Uh, appreciate your time and uh, opportunity to express to the world what I've been uh, experienced for about seven years ago. Uh, well, as you know, my name is Kike. I've been working with this amazing Buffo Alvarius medicine, and I've been traveling all over the United States and Europe for several years now, seven, as I, I, I can remember. How old are you? I am 52 years old. Mm -hmm. So you started with 45. I started with 45 What years What made old. you start? Uh, kind of addiction and depression. I was in my divorce. Uh, I had a divorce and I used to be a social user of cocaine. Mm. And then after my divorce, I went depressed and I started using more and more till the time I wanted to suicide, injecting myself some big doses of cocaine. Uh -huh. Then suddenly appeared the medicine into my life and it changed my life completely 160 degrees. 
who presents who presented you the medicine and how did that happen where did you meet this guy or this girl well you know i was uh, living in marbella and uh i was once walking through the beach and it was a strange uh i met this guy in sonora beach bar club uh -huh. that is the name of the uh, of where is the buffo come from so it was a lot of coincidence in this uh journey and this name go uh, gonzalo he told me kike you know it seems to be you are a good person but it seems to be your you were also overusing uh drugs would you like to heal with a buffo and i said yeah so after two months octavio retic came to marbella i got experience And then I have a transformative uh, switch on my life. My depression were gone. After Addiction one experience? Was, yes. I was, well, it was one day experience, but three intakes in the same day. So it was uh, quite intense. What happened during the intakes? Well, the first intake I had, it was amazing. Suddenly a uh, screen appears in front of me and I start seeing the most beautiful things ever in my life. But also the part of the group, because we were 21 people down there, mm -hmm. uh, they were seeing the same screen. So I felt that everybody was looking at my movie. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. Uh, and yeah, it was the most beautiful times in my life. That was like 21, 20 minutes uh, process. Then the guy pushed me back again to do the medicine. And this time I saw all of the people were like kind of uh, extraterrestrial beings, like uh, uh, reptilians and and other kind of uh, beings. Everybody <laughs> were different, so strange. And then on the third one, when he told me to do it, suddenly I saw God, I felt God, I feel like God, and I felt everything, it was one. At the end of the day, it was the most beautiful thing ever I ever experienced in my life. So it was uh, completely, completely extreme, uh, beautiful, amazing thing that I experienced that day. So that makes me change. And then after... And, but, you, but you were addicted to cocaine for a lot of years, right? It was more social. But then when I had, I get a divorce, it was much more intense mm -hmm. from maybe a gram. I used to, I used to use a, a week. I used to start using three, four grams a day. No way. Yes. Three or four grams a day. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow. That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It was wow. intense. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's a lot. Yeah. So the next day after this first Bufo experience, you woke up and the, the addiction was gone or did it was you know craving? It was the, no, I mean, it, it, it was not addiction. It was the, the way I was feeling. I was feeling like I, life is not worth it. Uh, no joy, no hope, no any kind of uh, uh, thing to motivate me to keep going. You know, it was like totally destroyed it. Mm. Oh, because the depression of the misuse of uh, so much cocaine and also because I was left from my, my wife. So I didn't have any intention to keep living, you know, I mm. really wanted to die. Mm. And suddenly this uh, magic thought uh, changed my life, <laughs> you know? So it Just was the amazing. beauty of it and the, yeah. the feeling of being God and being connected yeah. to everything. Yeah, yeah. But then after, after this uh, experience, I went back home and as you know, many of the people have flashbacks at night time and I have a period of six months having those flashbacks and in those flashbacks and flashbacks for six months yeah yeah I was going back into the experience I was sleeping four hours every day but I was totally full charge of energy during the, the next uh, 20 hours 20 19 hours uh, going on and and then I was looking forward to go sleep because in my dream it was uh, caves with Indians in taking medicine and the most of Indians who were smoking buffo. Yeah. They were, they were smoking to buffo with me, you know, and in your dream. Yeah. <laughs> in your dream. And the most strange thing it was, yeah. The most strange thing it was, was when I decided to come to Mexico and then I went to the, because Senate. you were living in Spain, right? I was living in Spain. Are you Spanish? No, I'm Mexican. You're Mexican, but you live your life yeah, in Spain. I live, I live because I was, I was married with the Spanish girl. Okay. That's why I was living in Marbella. So I take the plane back home, back, back to uh, the desert. And I went to the Seri tribe 
and I knocked the door of Pancho Bernet house. That is the one of the elders of the community. Of which tribe? The, the Seris. Uh -huh. It's a series, uh, four, tri four tribes living down there. It's the Tams, the Seris, the Yaquis, and mm -hmm. I don't remember the other name. Of in the, the Mexican uh, desert. In the Mexican desert where the toad grows because it's, it's all just only place in the world on them endemic uh, race that is just in Mexico growing there. And they so, discovered the toad? No, they don't. Uh, they don't have evidence as who are the ones discovered. It's supposed to be Albert Most. Albert Most is a guy from, from Texas. Phoenix, Texas yeah. or Phoenix, yeah. somewhere in the south of United Nobody States. Nobody really knows, right? Yeah, it's Albert Most. Oh. Albert Most is the ones that he discovered. When did he discover it? In the 69. Oh, That's 1969? 1969. And uh, then the Indians started using it? No, it's not also an evidence. This is a nice story that Octavio Redding created or generated. And uh, of course, uh, on the beginning, a lot of people start trusting in that history, but it's just a hypothesis. It's not yes. been discovered or comproved. Yeah. Till the time they don't really see if they uh, they have any evidence that is uh, being used down there. It's just an hypothesis. Mm. So, did you know anybody in the Indian tribes, or you just went no, there? No, I didn't. And, and I do a research and do uh, uh, um, a little bit of investigation about where Octavio was uh, using this medicine, and I find out there was in the Seri tribe because many of the people were sick of the uh, crack use of mm -hmm. uh, methamphetamine, mm -hmm. and Octavio was were helping them to, to cure. Mm -hmm. So the original idea was that the healers were series. And of course, everybody now believe that it's like this, but it's not. This is something that is, it needs to be also re, uh, re uh, read it or re uh, read it. Retold, be, yeah. retold it, you know, in somehow, uh, because it's just uh, a hypothesis. But with the idea of being the series, I went to the series tribe, I knocked the door of this guy, and he uh, he opened the door, he told me, hey, Kike, we were waiting for you for a long time. No way. Yeah. And he then, heard about you or just like intuition? He told me, he told me that, you know, and then the most strange thing is that the dreams were having medicine with the Indians. And then what he told me says, okay, I'm going to train you, but the training is going to be big doses in sacred caves in the desert. So my no. dreams manifested it in somehow, you <laughs> know? Yeah, it's such an incredible thing. Also, it was February. In February, the toads are underneath the soil, right? Mm -hmm. So only the last day when I was receiving the chanting, the Indian chantings and the blessings, some kids start screaming, Kike, Kike, a toad, I know. Abuelo, abuelo, a toad, a toad. And then we didn't pay attention to it. After five minutes, the kids knocked the door Mm -hmm. And they came in with a big toad in the hands. The kids brought the toad. Yes. In February, that is impossible. You know, it's just the, the seasonal, uh, the seasonal uh, uh, time of the year is between June that started the mussels, the rainy season, mm -hmm. till the end of September. This is the only season okay. when the, the toads come. Okay. And I was in February and the February was happening that. So you're 45 years old. You have the dreams for six months. Then you fly to the, the uh, Sonora Desert. Desert. You meet the Indians and they start training you in the yeah. caves with high doses of bufo. Yes. And how many times did you did you smoke I it there? I did it like maybe, imagine, calculate three times a day, 15 days. I no. was 45 times in one month. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Three times a day for fifty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was the that was the test. High doses. High doses. That was full, the test. Full dose. Full dose. Yeah. And the, that's a, that was the test. You know, this the is test the, for what yeah, if you're to to to, to see if, how can I can handle the medicine. You know, to see if I if I was able to to be present in full doses. You know, but something strange that it happened is that I was on the first time I was smoking the toad. Uh, I was with Octavio Retin and I was totally present. But Octavio Retin time, was your mentor who 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 no. gave it to you in in Spain, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So you became friends and. Yeah, well, we are. You were together. So we are. We are together. I was just his client on that day. Okay. Uh, we have a contact just for that day, and I didn't see him any any okay. other time in my life. So we with the Indians in, in Mexico, you 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 weren't with him there. 
No. Okay. So no, you were was alone. My own. How long did they train you? They trained me for 15 days, uh, 21 days, 15 days, and then seven days sharing with them and so on. Uh, was it, uh, were you alone or was there uh, a lot of people who got trained or no, was it just you? No, it was you? just me. It was just me. Uh, a friend of mine from Spain, he reached me after. Uh, he was with me just about a week and he left. But I was totally alone with the Indians down there. Yeah, and then... The, How did you sleep in those 15 days? I was sleeping in Abuelos Pancho's house. He had a house in the desert down there. And how was your how was the sleep? Huh? How was your sleep? Could you sleep? My sleep, yeah, it was, it was fine. You know, I never had these problems with, uh, with the flashbacks. I always could handle it and enjoy it instead to suffer and struggle with it. So uh, there is a lot of people they can have this kind of... Uh, uh, processes with the medicine, not everybody can lose the the sleeping mode. Of course, they can go on flashbacks, but then mm -hmm. if you don't go on fear, you are able to, to go on sleep and mm -hmm. somehow. So what, what happens next? You're there, you get trained, and then you say to yourself, then, okay. Then I came, I came back to Spain. I used to work as a manager in a restaurant. And then uh, it was a lot of fears because I wanted to start sharing the medicine. But as you know, medicine is kind of not allowed to be in uh, in uh, in use in so many countries in the in the United in the United States and America and uh, Europe. Mm -hmm. So I trust the universe. And once uh, I was with a friend of mine, and he told me, uh, I told him, I says, I don't know what to do with my life. Should I just dedicate my life to? work with the toad or should I just do on the weekends and keep working as a, as a manager in the mm. restaurant? Uh, he says, brother, just jump into the medicine, trust in universe and you'll see the results. So I did it. And since then I've been not stopping working with the medicine. So for seven years you've been nonstop traveling almost, around. Almost. Sometimes I take breaks of one, two, three months. Yeah. Because I need it. Uh -huh. But mostly of the time, uh, these seven years is long enough every weekend of uh, ceremonies everywhere in, in Europe and America somehow. Wow. And <laughs> what kind of, were there people with addictions also coming to you? All or kind what? of people, you know, I mean, at the beginning, I used to begin to be a little bit exigent, right? To, to see which was the reason. And I want to just to treat people with addictions because I think I thought that it was more needed. But then a friend of mine says, why you don't give the chance to other people maybe to heal whatever they don't know? Mm. And you are denigrating them. So I started allowing uh, many other different people. And then I discovered that people with uh, suicide dogs, people with uh, PSTD, post-traumatic disorder, people with addictions, people with attachments, they start to heal all these kind of patterns. So I serve into whoever needed and whoever are willing to heal through this amazing medicine. In, 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 uh, in the, everywhere in the world where I can go. What was the craziest thing that ever happened in a Bufo ceremony? Well, you know, this is uh, such intense medicine. One time in Holland, I have a girl, she stopped breathing. She stopped breathing. Yeah, because I think the shock of medicine, or uh, some people say this is because the Bufo tenin in influence in some part of the brain that the people forgot about breathing. Uh -huh. But uh, thanks to God in that time, I had someone to, to teach me how to bring it back. So from this time, I have three times more these, uh, these cases, mm -hmm. but I knew what to do. So mm. it's been safely, uh, say thanks to God, nothing happens. Mm -hmm. So now I have more knowledge how mm -hmm. to bring people back in the case of it. And of course, you know, in the beginning I was a little bit more hardcore. I was giving so much full doses. Mm -hmm. Now I'm trying to be a little bit more gentle and not to go so deep, mm -hmm. mostly in the first uh, times with the people because then we avoid the bad processes and also the possibilities to stop breathing in somehow. Have you had experiences with other psychedelics also? Of course, I begin my my research or my uh, mystic uh, journey when I was 17. It was the first time I went to the desert and I got experience with the peyote. Mm. 
And also it was amazing, you know, because I don't know if you know what is a Nahual. Nahual is when you eat enough peyote to become an animal. Ah, you became an animal? So, so I became an animal. I was an uh, eagle. And it was amazing because I could see myself. No way. Down. And yeah. yeah. You could see yourself from the sky? Yeah, 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 from the sky. Is that what happens typically with the, a lot of peyote? The peyote is supposedly sometimes they... People convert in the, the blue deer. There is the most typical, yeah. but also you can convert in peyote in all in a in a in an eagle or whatever animal is around. And that's why uh, uh, Castaneda used to talk about Nahual and the power that you can become any animal you want. So it's been amazing too. With this cactus, you can become any animal you want. This is the history <laughs> from the Nawals and also from the Iwak, uh, people that they live in the desert. The uh, how you call it the Iwak? The, the, no, the hukiri. The hik, uh, hikuri is the name of a plant, but the the people that they uh, do healings with it and the people that they live there that I forgot the name of it, uh, they do this kind of uh, processes with this medicine. Have you done it again, the peyote? The peyote, I, I had it uh, done it three or four times more, but I think it's like every single, single thing that you do in life. I think the first the first one in their life is the most powerful and transformative uh, mm. time, you mm. know, like the first time of washroom, the first time of, of peyote, the first time of Aya, first time of mm. Bufo is the most significant one. Mm. And then of course you can keep working with them, but mm -hmm. will not be so powerful as mm -hmm. the first time mm -hmm. in all of them. Yeah. So what's the, what's important when you, when you, when you take Bufo, when you receive the medicine, if there's someone listening and interested, what, what should they look out for? What's, what's important to me, to people to know what they go, what are they going to go through? For me, the most important thing is to check out all the safety, uh, all the safety uh, points that's health, you know, mm. and also to give the compromise of the people that they go into a uh, very strong medicine uh, experience. And it can be chances that it can be a hard reintegration sometimes for most of them. Uh, I have done research with a few researchers like MAPS and ICERS. Uh, it was a girl uh, traveling with me doing some questionnaire filling forms and after a follow up after the medicine for three months. And after Octavio Sretti, myself and another practitioner, they put all the database together. They found out from every 10 person, one person can struggle it. We struggle with the process, with the reintegration. What does struggle mean? The struggle means that the people has strong flashbacks at nighttime mm. when we are almost ready to go sleep. We're falling asleep. Suddenly the medicine got activated again. We mm -hmm. feel like we go into the experience mm -hmm. and the people, of course, they, they, they got excited. They cannot sleep and they go to try, go, they try to go sleep it again and then goes again and it goes mm. again and it yeah. goes again. So they can't so, sleep. So they can sleep. For so, weeks sometimes. Yeah. For us, for example, 24 hours without no sleeping is okay. 48 hours with not sleeping becomes annoying and then it comes uh, psychotic uh, psychotic episodes, you know. Do you uh, understand why the toad is doing this? Is there some deeper meaning behind it or? Uh, it's hard to know why for some people can be very pleasure, pleasant, and for some people can be health. So if, if those scientists, anybody, any doctor have found out why and who is going to go in this mode. Mm -hmm. So it's like lottery thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it's like a lottery. Yeah. yeah. And so you don't, do not know how to prevent this. Not to prevent it, but we have tools to reintegrate it in somehow. How do you know? reintegrate it? Is with some tools like melatonin, magnesium, 5-HTP, and some kind of uh, sleeping herbs to calm down the people and the people. CBD, I heard of. CBD also, yeah. Okay. Yeah, a few, few tools that is mm. important to have it on the side of the bed, just in case. Mm. So you know a lot of different psychedelics, right? Yeah. What's the difference between Bufo and the rest of them? Bufo for me is the strongest medicine in planet Earth. 
<laughs> right? And we have also the fine mail, but the fine mail is just uh, pure fine mail. It's the synthesized. And the ones that is organic is the fire, the, the toe medicine. But we need to consider the toe medicine is fine mail DMT plus 19 other compounds, mm. a part of the fine mail DMT, bufotenin, and then 19 other compounds. So mm. it's like a psychedelic cocktail at the end of the day. So that's the difference between one and the other one. Yeah, I remember my first experience with you. Yeah. It was very intense, the psychedelic cocktail. I started also with the, uh, uh, with the toad, the masculine. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was a really, really intense, I have to say. Yeah. I remember also you, Chris, <laughs> you were one of the people I always remember. <laughs> yeah. And it was amazing. And, uh, it's uh, just a pleasure to see you grow into, in, into, into this, uh, research and doing this, uh, podcast. Mm. Thank you so much for your work and thank you so much for collaborating with the psychedelic society mm. in somehow and uh, hoping that one day we have the permission to be uh, using them with no kind of restrictions. Mm. Is that your dream? That's a, I think it's a dream from a lot of people around the world that uh, it should be not be, it should be like legalized mm. somehow that is like happening in the United States. As mm. you know, uh, many countries, many, uh, states in the United States, like Washington. Legalized Wolfo? They have already legalized Wolfo and they have already legalized psilocybin and they have already legalized ayahuasca. Wow. So this is a big step. Uh, mm. United States is doing as a first, uh, first pioneer potential, yeah. potential wor- uh, country in the world mm. and looking forward that the European Union start doing all this too, you know, because it would be a big progress. And we know, as you know, as a psychonaut, as I am, we know that we change a lot. We become brothers and sisters and there is not more difference between one and the other one mm. or who is more and who is less. Ego is dead and we are all the same and we are one. And that's the most beautiful thing, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. That is a beautiful thing to feel that. Yeah. But a lot of people have never felt that. Yeah. This is uh, why maybe this podcast uh, will help some people to to jump into the experience and mm. and also to heal through these uh, amazing tools, you know, mm. that I think is much better than the chemical things that the people is using it every day more and more, mm. you know. It's an, a study that says that in the United States, 60% of the population uses Prozac. And it's a documentary that it calls Prozac. Uh, Prozac city, Prozac uh, world, or Prozac country. Prozac country. Uh, yeah. Okay. And you can see it on, on, is it on, on YouTube. On YouTube. Mm-hmm. And it's, what is it's, Prozac doing? Is like, Prozac is an antidepressive, yeah. antidepressive, you know, everybody's in that antidepressive. 60% of the population. 16 in the or 16? 60. Wow. Six zero, you know. Of course, the pharma industry is involved on it. Mm. So that's uh, one of the things, you know. Maybe the pharma industry can start producing bufo. Oh, <laughs> it will be, I, I think nobody can do the same nature as us, you know, that's yeah. what's so, that's why it's so beautiful and such, uh, amazing how this, uh, little animal can produce mm. such a beautiful medicine in, mm. in the world. In and the, the Indians that use this in their culture, uh, do they wish that the Western world also of course, of course, I think, I think, uh, people with a good heart and people with good intention are willing to, to open up for the whole world, you know, and it's happening, you know, I don't know if you know about James Horrock. No. James Horrock was uh, one of the writers of the toe medicine is the Tryptamine Palace. Mm-hmm. That's the name of the book. Tryptamine Palace. Yeah. It's, uh, unfortunately he died in, uh, in an accident like mm-hmm. two or three months ago, mm-hmm. but he was writing the psychedelic revolution. And he says that in this er- in this er- era is going to become a big, uh, revolution, a psychedelic revolution that is going to change the world. And it's happening. You know, this is what I feel, you know, more mm-hmm. people is getting jump, jumping into the experience of, uh, many psychedelics and doing all this, uh, change in the world. What kind of what changes have you seen in people? Ah, uh, as I told you, the less depression, more happiness, more union, more helping, you know, more humbleness and, 
And this is what the world needs more now than anything else, you know, being at peace and somehow. Do you want to ask something? Yeah. Can you say something, Kike, about using uh, different medicines? Because I've heard that there are some uh, um, difficulties. Uh, in, in which means, sister? Mixing psychedelics. Mixing psychedelics. For example, you always say you first take the combo and then the bufo and then... Yeah. Well, uh, medicine. yeah, I'm gonna consider, I don't gonna, gonna consider it the combo as a psychedelic. Uh, combo works in the physical body more than a psychedelic. But uh, we are here uh, talking about preparing the three bodies, the physical, emotional, and the spiritual uh, heart, uh, heart uh, chakra that it works. Uh, First of all, the physical with the combo, you're preparing the body. Second, you are preparing the universal connection with the seven chakra. And then you close so in what? the red. How, how do you connect the seven chakras? With? The, se the seven chakra is the ones that is where the buffalo body works. The five male is the, the, the seven chakra mm. is where the, where the works, it works the, the medicine, right? Mm -hmm. Is the universal connection. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of people, when they have experience with the buffalo, they go into universe journey, right? Mm -hmm. The awareness, right? Mm -hmm. Then the, the, the camo work on the physical body to prepare it. And mm -hmm. then the ayahuasca op works in the heart, open the heart. So what it does, the three combination of it is it reintegrate the whole experience, right? In an easier way. And I had experience and I see the people that are much more easier after medicine of a buffo mm -hmm. when we do all the three steps mm -hmm. than if they just go with the buffo or by itself the camo or by itself the ayahuasca. Of course, ayahuasca is more gentle mm -hmm. in somehow. And what is the difficulty if you take cambo? What is the difficulty if you take cambo after bufo? I mean, to be honest, uh, I have no experience about it, but there is research that it says that it can activate in somehow in the in the dangerous way the 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 cambo right after the bufo, right? Uh, there is no evidences, but there is a lot of people talking about it. Uh, mostly people, they work in the, in the jungle with, uh, with the bufo or with the camo, right? A lot of people also say that it's very dangerous to mix the ayahuasca and the bufo, that it is, right? But of course, if you take first the ayahuasca that it contains the Maui Nivero, there is where the danger it is because the Maui Nivero, what it does is, uh, giving the chance to go into the bloodstream, the, the, the compounds of the bufo. And of course, you don't want to have Maui invaders or, or, and the people that is uh, going into the bufo experience because it can be for hours the same experience. So the catharsis oh, can be longer. Oh, fuck. And if like you have four hours yeah, on, imagine, on bufo? Imagine oh they having God. a catharsis 20 for- 20 minutes was a- Enough. Imagine, was an eternity. Yeah. So imagine, imagine the heartbeats and the and the people that it moves a lot mm. because uh, there is catharsis that the people are very peaceful and there is catharsis that the people start screaming, shouting, shaking and so on. So imagine that you give someone the bufo and then suddenly you find out that he's for one hour and a half or two hours or three hours in that experience. Mm. That's why it's dangerous. Mm. Bufo after Aya. But if you do Bufo and then Aya, mm. there is not the, the risk. Mm. Right. And I heard people were nearly died from, from doing Bufo alone. Of course, you know, I mean, this is a, such a big experience that you are totally lost ego, right? And then imagine if you are lose control of yourself, and you are in a dangerous spot, like in the terrace or like in the swimming pool or like in the jacuzzi, of course you take the bufo, then you lose control mm. and then you can drown or you can step out of, of the terrace and fall into the, into, into, into the floor. And you know someone who took it 
at, I have, I, I know that the, in the cave, uh, in the cave. Mm, yeah, of course I did in a cave, but no, I you, mean, you told me there was someone who took it in a cave and nearly died cause he fucked his face. Uh, up. yeah. Well, this is a guy that I don't want to say his name. No, right? don't say his name, but tell the story. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, it was a guy in the a Spanish guy that he was doing the Camino Santiago and mm. he was walking and then suddenly he found, uh, a cave, he decided to do the buffo there. On his own. On his own. Mm. Uh, he did the experience. Of course, he was tough. When he wake up, he was all scratched his face and he was nearly in the in the in the edge of the cliff. Mm -hmm. So imagine if he couldn't be a little bit meter more, yes. he would die. Because you can can potentially totally lose control of the body, right? Of course. The body does whatever it wants. Of course. Maybe jumping around, maybe running around, maybe maybe scrolling, maybe shaking, maybe, shaking. maybe running away, but without any hitting your hands, your head exactly. on the floor. Exactly, exactly. So that's why it's such important to have always someone that really knows what he's doing in the case of worse a scenario that stop breathing, you stop breathing or you start getting too intense that we can hold the space, you know, but not just in the moment, you know, mm. prepare and let mm. know the people what they're going to go through is such important thing in somehow. And also to support them in the, in the process of the reintegration in the hard reintegrations to do a follow up and to help them to reintegrate and to come down after experiencing somehow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And yeah. how does your journey continue now? Do you well, continue like that or do you, do you? I have, I have, of course, I have changed a lot of things since the beginning. I, I, I really put the responsibility of the people, what they're going to go through, telling the truth that it can be tough for next few days or a few weeks. Mm. Also letting them know that they have my support. But uh, putting the responsibility on, you know, it's like uh, it's like everything else. Everything everything that we do in life has a risk. You go to a snow a snow ski, a ski uh, station, right? And mm. then you go into the ski. Mm. You can have an amazing day or you can break your leg, mm. right? But who is responsible? Mm -hmm. You or the ski station? Do you think it's important what you do while you're on the buffo? In which sense? Like... Can you do mistakes? There is no mistakes. There is no mistakes. It needs to be the way it should be. And there is no way to control because you are out of, out of your body. Mm. So the best way to do a good buffo is to be prepare you yourself. How do you prepare? Uh, during, through, uh, through diet, through sleeping properly before, to not have any kind of drugs, right? to do maybe some exercise, you know, before you're going to go through feeling good, you know, go in the experience feeling totally good. Of course, sometimes it's hard because you are, we are emotional. Sometimes we are up, sometimes we're down, but mostly of the time is go to very low positive, positive mind and positive set setup. So you have a beautiful experience. Of course, there is a lot of people, they come to treat uh, depression and how they can feel good if they are depressed. But for example, I never sell medicine to people that they have using antidepressive pills. Why what not? I do, because it can create an, a serotonin shock. Mm. So people can die, right? So it's such important to do all this research. And if people is taking antidepressives, the best thing that you can do is say, is stop doing antidepressive, start microdosing uh, mushrooms and then come to the ceremony and will be amazing because I have experience with people like that. They were very depressed. Mm. They didn't know how to do that. Mm. I recommend them to, da, to, do, to go into uh, microdosing mushrooms and then willing to attend the ceremony and they be changing completely. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Totally. Beautiful. You know, people oh. with high depression for years and years and years and years psychiatrics, psychotherapies, nothing works, then this is a magical and uh, a beauty, you know? This is the beauty of this medicine. And and how is it if people have uh, addictions? Oh. I don't know if you can say addictions, but if they have fear. 
well, you know, we got to remember the mostly uh, of these experiences. Of course, nobody wants to lose control. Nobody wants to lose ego, right? And of course, a lot of people, they before they come to the ceremonies, they start doing our research. And what I tell them is like, look, you know, it's, it's beautiful. I mean, I don't know if you remember, you know, how was your experience with the with the buffalo? It was amazing, beautiful at the end of the day. Of course, intense, mm. but amazing, no? And this is what it is. So I tell the people to relax and to allow the buffalo guide them through a beautiful uh, results and beautiful experience too. Mm. But if I, if I remember the girl who wanted to come uh, when you begin to work here, um, and now she, until now she didn't come because, and, and I think she, she will not come because of, maybe it's not fear is the right word, you know, I, th I, think, I think a lot of people, they don't want to jump out of the comfort zone, of course. They are good with the pill. They are good in, they say they feel safe at home. Uh, they have a, 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 a social panic. And, social uh, anxiety. A social anxiety. And this is one of the things that the people, they, they don't push themselves to, to, to jump into the experience and heal themselves through, through all these, these processes, you know? So I thought it was beautiful. I, I, I remember as it, as if it was yesterday. Like I remember being in this in realm and the the endless beauty, but also it was so shocking to realize or to feel that I am everything. Yeah. Because then everything that happened to me in my whole life and all my memories is something I created myself. And th this is the shock of being completely responsible for the whole galaxy yeah and this is the um the i think the the huge um also like a little bit the burden you carry afterwards you know because yeah. you you carry everything because you you have seen the 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 other side you have seen the maybe the truth or maybe another perspective which is that uh It makes no sense to complain or to p point your fingers at, at anything or, or someone because it's all you. Yeah. And this is very weird to to say as a human because right now I am an ego, I am a person, uh, yeah. I have an eye. But uh, the days after my first Buffo experience, I it, it was just a mix of every emotion like shock, bliss, happiness, but also fear, like. Just power, you know, like, what the fuck? What is this? What, who am I? What, where, <laughs> what are we? Yeah, and, yeah. um, well, you I know. love the intensity, but I can, I can imagine that, uh, um, I had a friend who couldn't sleep for a month. He, he said, yeah, and he had a, he had a hard time and I didn't know how to help him. Who did it? Who, who, who was this, this, uh, friend? Uh, do you remember it was a Turkish uh, Mohammed, guy? Mohammed, no? But why he, didn't, like why he didn't get in touch with me? You know, I was willing to help him. He tried everything you said. Yeah. He but tried them. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, I don't know. And, and since then I stopped recommending it because I'm, I'm too fearful that it, that others might have a, 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 a hard time um, uh, afterwards. Yeah. But yeah. F for me, After my first experience, I told all my friends, oh my God, mushrooms are awesome. Ayahuasca is amazing, but you have to try Bufu. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, I found this Kike and I found this new thing, man. He's around, you have to. And I and you remember, I brought all these people and, and yeah, then yeah, yeah. was this one guy yeah. who after three weeks called me and said, man, I, 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 I can't sleep. I stopped my job. I, I, uh, and he looked bad and um, how he is now. Now he's fine. Yeah. Now it he's fine. It cost him a lot of work, you know? Yeah. Excuse me? It cost him a lot of work to raise. Yes. So at somehow. the end, I feel every psychedelic journey at the end is very rewarding, even a tough integration. Of course. But it's one of the hardest, toughest therapy forms you can choose. I yeah, guess. but I mean somehow but it's worth you the know, price. If, if I could if I could know that he went in that deep state 
there is still some tools for the, this kind of situation. What you could know? you have done or what could we have done? That, that in, the, in those cases, we, we need to use a little bit more uh, stronger uh, the sleeping pills, you know, uh. that chemical things. Uh. And you need a prescription. Uh. But in that in that case, you have a case of a couple in uh, in somewhere here in Europe, right? That they came to me. They have the same experience, but it was worse because it was a couple. So mm -hmm. imagine the energy of him bring draw drag down the woman, right? Mm -hmm. And the both were the same, struggling for five, six, seven days. They were really desesperated. So they both had the experience. Both, both they both experience and both they had the lack of sleep. Mm -hmm. And they got, get in touch with me after the sixth day, okay? Uh, and they tell me, yeah, we have some alcohol last day, last night, and now we cannot sleep. I says, look, I told you not alcohol, nothing, mm. right? Because it, it can make it worse. Mm. So at the end of the day, they they took some uh, some Valium, mm. right? For just for two nights, three nights, mm. just to set them down. Mm. After the third day, they were ready to go, mm. you no? Know? So they heal it. They, they, I mean, it was it was the healing with the medicine, but also the healing of the process. The formula was that right that they use. I don't like to use it at all. Yeah, I like sure. natural products, sure. products, right? But in some cases, I tend to have the suffering. Just go with the three days of chemical, a little bit stronger, mm. right? And then the problem sort. Somehow. What, what do you think? What kind of psychological problems or difficulties is okay for the bufo and what is not? Uh, to have it before? Yes. If people come and say. Well, you know, it's like one one day a girl came with uh, his son. Uh, he says, you know, he's a schizophrenic, maybe bipolar. And there is no way we can, psychiatrists can help them. I uh, says, well, he's already damaged. Why we don't try You have tried everything, <laughs> right? Right, yeah. And he tried it and he got much, much better, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. So it helped, it. The, it helped it. It helped the schizophrenia. It helped it. It helped it. And somehow he was much, yeah. much more calm, you yeah. know? And this is the one of the things that the girl was looking for because imagine to have on your side a uh, psychophrenic people that he, he, they don't stop. They don't stop it all day. All day uh, in tranquility and, and the problems and so on. And mm. with the medicine, he come down. So if he's already the problem there and mm. there is no solution mm. during several years, why to not give it a try? Mm. No, at the end of the day. You are always asking in the beginning of your, uh, if there is a person having psycho, psychopathology, some things in, in the direction of psychopathology. Yes, I do. So if in this case, there would be a person saying, yes, I'm uh, psychotic, what would you do? It depends, you know, it depends how he's willing to experience maybe chances, ch uh, chance, uh, ch changes, or if he's willing to be the same, you know, if I, if I see that the guy, he says, okay, there is no solution, let's try it. And he takes responsibility or their families, they take responsibility about it. I won't mind, you know, to do a, a test. I have experienced this girl. She was 12 years old. This is the youngest uh, girl I ever served in my life or the youngest person in my 12 life. 12 years old. 12 years wow. old. The father contacted me and he told me, says, you know, my, my daughter wants to die. She wants to suicide. She was 12 years old. She was yeah. suicidal. Yeah. Because he, she was, she's, she was receiving bullying on her, on her school. So she didn't want to go to school. Wow. She didn't want to leave. She was just, she didn't want to study. She was feeling on, on helpful for the society. And he, the, the guy came to me and says, can you serve it? He says, if you authorize it and you make responsible of uh, what we're going to do, let's do it. We did it. The girl, after three days, she was showing up on school. The, the kids have started respecting her. She puts her boundaries and the girl was again, back in track, happy and joy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, Whoa. so amazing, <laughs> amazing, amazing results. And wow. you can listen in the internet and you can uh, also facilitators, they can tell you such, such things that mm -hmm. you don't even imagine. Mm -hmm. that uh, I felt fearless for days. 
I felt like I had no need for nothing, like no zero addictions, but also no need to drink, no need to, no need for food, no need for, I didn't have any cravings or needs. It was like, I don't need anything. I am everything, so, you know? Great. And this, uh, this was, uh, to me, it was uh, really uh, made me stronger, I think. Yeah. Just, yeah, yeah, just yeah. to remember it, you know, sometimes now I just sit in my bed and I just remember because I, I haven't forgotten. Yeah. I don't know if you listen to the podcast of, or the interview of Mike Tyson, you know, who's yeah, Mike Tyson, of course. right? Yeah. Right. He's a big guy, you know, he was the kicking ass of all, all the world. And now, suddenly... he's, now he's so kind. He yeah. made the Bufo famous, huh? Yeah. He yeah. made it really famous. Well, there is a lot of people, you know, they have been through. I don't know if you also know that the, the son of uh, the president of the United States. Hunter uh, Biden? The Biden, the, the son, he healed his addiction through the toad. No way. Yeah. Really? It's in the news. It's in the news. So you see, you know, <laughs> it's the country wow. that if he is not allowed to do it and the president of the United States, the uh, son, has healed through that, you know? He was crack addict, right? Crack so, addict, crack addict, yeah, and sex. It's getting so famous now, yeah. and a lot of people are, um, because when when famous people start doing things, people want to uh, do, do it too. Also, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just my recommendation is to find a, a good practitioner mm. that he has experience, and mm. also that he tells you all the consequences, mm. and, uh, and then you take it or not. That's mm. such important thing, you know. But There's a lot of people that you put in the pipe on the mouth, and they don't tell in the people what they can to, they gonna go through, or they don't take care about them afterwards. They don't don't give a shit. And this is such important to have, and a practitioner that has the integrity to serve the medicine in the best and proper way. In my point of view, right? This mm. is up to the people. They can do and choose whatever they want. Mm. But it's much better to to find a people that it really cares what he's doing and how he's doing it and so on. That's my suggestion, you know. And it's a shame that your that your friend didn't come to me because it could be much more easier and faster, you know. Yeah. This recovering. So this is uh this is what I invite people, no, to mm -hmm whatever problem exists to come and, and look for the help. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, after seven, after six people, six thousand, six thousand people served, of course I know what to do. You served a lot of people. Yeah, six thousand about. So imagine seven thousand, seven years, six thousand people. I have, I have no, it, it doesn't mean that I am more, or I want to believe that I know everything. Mm. I still learning, mm. but at least I have uh, the, the experience with uh, through the other people mm. to help more people in the case that they need it, you know, mm. that's important. It's like you go to, you go to the dentist and of course you want to choose the best one, right? Mm -hmm. Because he has experience and he might, be learning through all these mistakes or these learnings through mm -hmm. all this, uh, all of his career, you mm -hmm. know, and that's, uh, that's the beauty of, uh, doing, doing so many times and so long, mm -hmm. a work like this. And how's your life now? Do you, tra do you live like a nomad, like a traveler? You uh, just I travel still, around the I globe? I still traveling. Of course I came down, I came down this year and the next years, I think I'm going to start coming down a little bit. You know, I want to do, uh, of course, willing to help anyone, even people they don't have money, they can come to me and they can receive the medicine because I think it should be for everyone in the world. Mm. But now I'm trying to set up a little bit different kind of uh, treatments, retreats. Yeah, that uh, planning helps. on retreat center. Yeah, retreat center in in more in the south of Europe. Mm. where we don't have any kind of uh, inconvenience working mm -hmm. with the medicine and also more longer, you know, not just have, come, have the medicine and go, mm -hmm. you know, trying to bring, bring them, bring the people down, then do the medicine and then help them to reintegrate it as well. That's, that's my intention. No? So what's your vision for the dream retreat? Like the best, 
retreat buffet experience someone could have well you know preparing them with the food 10 days at least days. Uh, they are doing some as we say some combo and then some uh, kundalini yoga or breathing exercise and mm. meditation to calm down mm. you know we living in the society that everything is fast and quick and so on mm. it's a lot of stress in the bodies mm. and you know just come to a, a so high intense medicine being mm. stressful and mm. then go back into the stress life mm. is uh it's kind of hard you know so mm. the best way is to to do something longer yeah yeah and more prepared mm. so that people can enjoy it more and and also reintegrate it in the best way somehow well i wish you all the best the best of luck and thank you bro thank you i i sure will will come to your retreat I when the time so. is right i hope so and <laughs> i also wish you all the best for all your projects uh thank for you. this podcast and thank you, uh, also to be in here uh, yeah. many blessings for you uh for all the world and w one thing i need to say uh, last summer i did another buffo experience in the czech republic yeah um who you went with i can't remember the name right now oh he looks like because i trained three people down there you know he has something to do with coconuts He has like coconuts. a company for coconut products. I don't know who it is. He's not tattoo all of his no. face, no. 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 He's a bald head guy. No. Okay. Uh, but what I what I wanted to express is that, um, no, different. The second ceremony I had with you, mm -hmm. I did, and I organized it so that I have a vacation afterwards. Uh huh. And this was a lot easier for me to reintegrate. Of course. So you do bufo, and then you have a, a, break. a week. 10 days of vacation of rest and i wrote 10 songs 20 songs i was so open Creativity, you know and because yeah. i had time i didn't have to work i had no stress i could just be creative and write so my idea to everyone who wants to do bufo is the longer you have a break afterwards yeah the better it is yeah because you can just dwell in this feeling and stay it's, in this forever and then it's true and after a week or 10 days you can go back into the the stress and Normal the, life, the action yeah yeah, yeah it's yeah. true it's true you are totally right uh, that's why i'm willing to change uh, all these kind of practices no? yeah not nice. just come you know like not a big big uh, like a uh, mcdonald's thing you know like you will stop get the hamburger and go away yeah no <laughs> a little bit more it's like buffo to go buffo to go yeah <laughs> so Happy yeah buffo yeah I, i invite to all the practitioners to think about it and reconsider it to do uh, better work nice For And how like. how do I find you? Are you publicly? I not uh, I don't need it. Yeah, you know I don't want to. Uh, it's recommendation from mouth to mouth. That mm -hmm. is the best one. Uh, but yeah, I mean, no way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> no right, way. Right maybe, me, maybe I can yeah. contact. Maybe, maybe through blogs. Maybe through blogs. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll through, through 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 uh, some friend recommendation. Yeah, ma maybe it's gonna change when you're in Portugal and you're a little bit more settled and you know that you have nothing to risk. And of course, but of I course. also love the underground thing and you're just yeah. uh, living under the radar and yeah, just this underground yeah. medicine man. Yeah, love it. Love you, bro. Thank Take you so care, much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And. Wie fandst du die Folge? <lacht> Krasser Typ, oder? Seit sieben Jahren tut er durch die Welt und macht eine Buffo-Zeremonie nach der anderen. Ich liebe diesen Kerl einfach. Ich finde den so böse authentisch. Das gibt's einfach nicht. Wirklich, der hat dieses No Fucks Given. Der, der, der ist so real, sehr inspirierend. Ich liebe diesen Kerl. Kike, brother, I love you. See you in the next episode. Und ich genieße jetzt noch hier die Sonne in Australien. Wir sehen uns in der nächsten Folge. Ciao.